Welcome one and all and all in one to Fun Day Sunday with BAA Bell Arts Attractions, your bi-weekly guide and podcast thingy. And we don't really want to call it a pure podcast because it isn't, but it's kind of like a little discussion about the goings on, the latest goings on in the theatre world uh, for the upcoming week. And that's obviously in English. Uh, we are your hosts, Nella, Boyana and Blue Gloves Productions features, Blue Gloves features, who pipes in now and again to help us along with the session. So stay tuned for a discussion we're going to have at the end. Get your teas, get your coffees. I've got my sparkling water today, being very healthy. Don't forget to introduce Steve. He looks like an Oscar. Oh yeah, sorry guys. This is our little Steve. He's, he's our little mascot and you'll notice him about in all the blue gloves, features, thingies, and stuff that she does. So, yay. Hey, Steve. Hey, Steve. And <laughs> the, first, uh, the first event that we'd like to highlight for you this week is at Theater Walk at the, um, the Stena is uh, Alexander Popovich on Boulevard Kralja Alexandra 77A and uh, they'll be showing a play called Ukaloplivanje or Ukaloplivanje Tragedia Loptanja u Srba. So molding the tragedy of balling in Serbs. So kind of balling with a football. And that's going to take place tomorrow, Monday the 8th of February at 7 p.m. Tickets are 500 dinars. So get them now. You've got the link below. Anyway, the story is about a man who gets a chance to go back in time and try to change the future. So it's kind of like a back to the future thing. By facing the mistakes he made in connection to the national team of our countries when they played key matches at the Football World Championships from the 1990s to 2010. So I think this one is going to be really, really interesting for all you football fans out there and uh, all of you people that are interested in the goings on, uh, the football goings on in, in Yugoslavia back then and the politics interwoven with the sport. So I think that's going to be really cool for our footy fans. And then we have uh, another play at the same venue, which Nella is going to tell you about. Yeah, I just wanted to say like football's always had politics in it. So is any major sport. Um, so yeah, that's, but this one's very juicy. <laughs> it's really interesting to look at the sport of the time to see what the the sort of political climate was as well. And it's um, it'll be interesting to see how this guy is going to go back in time and try to change certain mm -hmm. key events in these football mm -hmm. matches. And I wonder if it's if it going to show if it, it, that it will change a traje trajectory of history somehow. No, no, very, very interesting. And, and we've got another interesting uh, also theatre piece at the same venue, Theatre Vuk, uh, Theatre Vuk, should I say, Sen Alexander Popovich on Boulevard Kralja Alexandra 77A. Um, it's on a different date though, Wednesday the 10th of February at 7pm. And it's called Neoklevai Improvisui. So do not hesitate, improvise. Uh, tickets are 800 dinars, and this is actually such an interesting concept. Uh, it's a play created as a, an author's project by Sirjan J. Karanovic uh, of the Faculty of Dramatic Arts in Belgrade. And it's done with the acting class in the seventh semester and is based on a series of improvisation exercises as opposed to dramatic texts. Uh, for those of you that do not know, improvisations are these instinctive, spontaneous games in which participants use their imagination to play or create sort of whatever scenario they want. I think um, a good example was the Drew Carey show of, of improvisation, where they just get um, people to throw words out from the crowd. I think that's that's what brings it to mind from, well, I'm showing my age again. Uh, but for this performance, everything that the actors will do on the stage will be created in that very moment without any prior preparation in front of the present audience. So if you are into improv, check it out. Now, Boyana, I don't know if you're into improv, um, 
And I really want to discuss that because as theatre goers, we usually go and watch plays that, that are from the written text. I don't think improv has reached such a big um, following in in Serbia and, and worldwide. It doesn't really have a massive following, but it's, it's quite an important um, skill or tool to have as both as an actor, but also in a presenter. Um, but let's let's just speak from a theatre point of view. Written mm -hmm. text versus improv, pros and cons. Which do you prefer? Can you be better in one than the other? Can you make yourself better in one than the other? What do we think? Who's going to start the discussion? Can I start the discussion? Go I'm on, so go uh, on, because you're so excited. <laughs> <laughs> let's hear. <laughs> um. Uh, a written play or a written text when you when you perform it it's you you get to really dig deep into a character and you get to learn uh, who you are who you're portraying what sort of processes feelings they've gone through to to become that person that you're playing on the stage whereas with improv you sort of have to become that person on the spot or you have to do those actions on the spot so they're very very different kinds of performances yes. um that's true. Pros, pros and cons. I think both have their pros, both have their cons. I think both can be incredibly creative. Just because one person plays Ophelia one way doesn't mean that you, boy, and I have to play Ophelia in the same way. Um, and, and just the, as with improv, if someone like me does improv, I can be extremely dry and boring. Uh, whereas someone like Boyana can be really colorful and fun and lively. So um, both have their pros, both have their cons, but that's sort of where I want to start this discussion off. I think, mm. Nina, Well, I mean, uh, as far as I can see, and as far as my experience goes, I haven't actually seen an improv play ever. I've only uh, particip participated in a few improv sessions a long, long time ago. And the only thing that I can really sort of uh, related to is kind of role playing as a kid and I think that comes really easily because when you're a kid and you're role playing you literally at that moment you are that that person that you're role playing and I suppose that's kind of what, what uh, improvisation is and I think I'd love to see that but I think it's it's probably very challenging and it's probably the, the reason why it's not such a so uh, mainstream because um, I think as adults it's a lot more difficult to kind of get in that zone and really be somebody else and perform that in, in, in front of an audience and not be nervous about it you know but that there are I'm sure that there are some very talented actors that can do it and another thing is I know this is not really um, talking about the pros and cons of written text and improvisation but I don't think you can have you can d d learn something you can learn a written text and recite it and be good at that but there are times when unfortunately our brains uh, uh, how shall I put it go out of order <laughs> all right like mine is today and where you just kind of have to kind of play along the show goes on the show must go on as it does in theater and um, another thing is that I, j I just don't think that you can separate the, the two you know i do think that there is some element of improvisation in a lot of uh, acting work and also what i've noticed in series you know when you, you you watch a series and you see actors playing the same role over time and they get more believable over time in the beginning you think oh you know, I'm already feeling their acting. And then as time goes on, you see them settle into their role. You see them kind of, you know, get to understand their character better and you at the same time. So the pros and cons of written text and improvisation, I'd say the cons of improvisation on stage is that it's very hit and miss. If you're not in the zone, it might be a miss for the audience. The written text, I suppose there is some element of safety there, you know, there, there is the message, the message that you're always going to put across that will maybe get a reaction from the audience. It's safer, 
it's safer and i think that's probably why it's... oh i i would disagree i don't i don't think i'm um, sorry to interrupt you i don't think there no no go on then. Uh, there's no i don't think you're safer in written text because um you were speaking about um some no, no, you were speaking about that some actors should improvise and the show must go on and um i, I think that happens in written text as well obviously uh, like people forget their lines or they say it a different way and you have to like improvise to keep the show going. Um, I think improv doesn't necessarily, a successful improv session doesn't necessarily depend how in character the actors are. It does help but it also depends on the story that's made up or as well as mostly the audience interaction. If the audience isn't feeling it for whatever reason, regardless of how good the performance is, then the improv didn't succeed well. And with written text, um, I don't think there's a safety in it because it depends again on the performance. Like you guys were giving the example of Ophelia. If the performance is bad or if the actors aren't feeling well that day or if the audience isn't into it that day, then there's like no safety in the it, written texts aren't more safe. If anything, written texts would have like higher expectation because with improvisation, people know it's on the spot and they know that it's made up as it goes along. Where by written text, some people may have like a past experience with a certain written text, like Shakespeare. That's the popularity of doing Shakespeare year after year. It's not hearing the story again, but how the story is told. Um, and as for the pros and cons of written text versus improv, um, I, like you guys said, it goes hand in hand. But I yeah. also think that, sorry, I also think that some actors prefer written more than improv, or some people prefer improv more than written. Um, I think some people don't find be, they don't find it as easy to improvise or they just need more time and more confidence like it's a different level of confidence um, it is playful but like you said we're adults so we don't play as much as we did when we were younger um, and the, the pros and cons question is a bit stupid that I asked but <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, each one has their own, and I think it depends on the person and the situation. And as for... I like the question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I like the question uh, in this discussion. Can you make yourself better in one than the other? And I think that's, that's you know, it's, it's important. I think in anything, you know what your strengths are. If you just said somebody prefers more improv, somebody prefers to memorize text. I'm notoriously bad at memorizing text, as you would know when I'm trying to memorize our BAA emails that I say every week, and I don't know why that is. It's really, really funny. But, you know, if you ask, if you put a button on me and say talk, why not? Yeah, that's fine. I will just talk your ears off. So. <laughs> I think I think also like acting what we forget and and I think we forget it a lot of the time and acting is not reading and reciting acting is actually reacting and it's always been reacting and um, and that's that's why a lot of performances are bad because some actors are inherently selfish and they don't care what is going on uh, on on the other side of the stage or on the person opposite them, both both on stage and in film. So they only think about themselves as opposed to reacting to what is going on in the moment. And I think with improv, you have no choice but to react. And I think you can use improv to help you with the acting, with the written word. Um, I think improv transcends better. I mentioned it being used in business. Uh, it's being used in business to teach people, they have improv, corporate improv classes to teach people how to react in business situations so that they're more professional, that they do their job better and, and everything else. Um, and it also teaches them how to listen um, because like you said, you can't, um, no, I don't think actors, um, some actors aren't, selfish, aren't necessarily selfish. I think they're worried about their next line and because they're worried about their next line or action, they, um, like, here's their line. Are selfish. 
Yeah, but they're worried about their next line. They're worried about themselves. I don't mean it in a bad way. I don't mean selfish as in would give they they're giving of themselves, but also they're worried they they're very they're internalizing the process a lot. So I think that that um improv can really help solve those issues. I agree, but I, I'm th- I'm saying um I'm just saying it's not um like you say it's not negative selfish, but maybe it's selfish like insecurity selfish. Um, yeah. yeah. I think yeah, you you both got a point there definitely. I mean, um coming from my experience of having I had my first audition a few months back and that was really challenging and you know, it was a self-tape audition which and also in Serbian. So I really piled on the challenges there and you know, I found myself I I, I couldn't refilm it because I got ill. And I said kind of like a piece that I wasn't really proud of, which unfortunately, you know, it happens. But you know, that there was that element of, you know, am I saying this with the right accent? You know, I was really I was thinking about me. I was thinking about my face. I was thinking about everything. And my reader wasn't a professional actor either. So it kind of like um I think as as Nella says, is definitely, you know, you have to think of it as a whole you know all of the elements are important your reader the other actors you know it's it's the moment and if everyone can zone into that moment then i think that's where the the magic happens you know between improv and writing and and, and memorizing i also i wanted to say another thing about improv which um which i find very sort of important to to highlight is when you when you go as an audience member to watch a, a written play you're essentially watching the same piece every single night whereas you can go and watch an improv piece every single night and it would be a completely different different That's performance really cool. yeah i mean have, have both of you been to uh, improv plays Well, I've been to improv classes uh, we did improvisation in school and university Uh I don't think I ever I may have gone to like one play maybe but um I think th- I think with improvisation I think maybe Bryony you probably may have seen improvisation works you just didn't know they were because some plays uh, I don't know if time here um some plays um like the plays that I make they're workshop based which is they start off in a place of improvisation with me and the cast and the crew me and the cast and that's where the play starts so we start off improvisation aka workshop and then we yeah. develop the play and what you see is the final product but it's not off a play from a place of impo- improvisation um so yeah so i think you have seen improvised plays but you just didn't know how they started Well, you know, it's interesting that we should mention improvisation actually because now I just remembered that one of the the most popular plays in Serbia were the I think there were three of them, uh, Radovan uh Radovan Treci yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there were like a few parts, but um apparently the 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 um the actor there would improvise uh every single time and you know he was a, a known alcoholic as well and all of his improvisations were kind of you know <laughs> whilst he was absolutely drunk so and it was it was wildly popular here, i suppose because he had such he had such inspiration you know when he was in that alcoholic trance you know that that all sorts of things would come out of his mouth then and even the actors would laugh along as well but people enjoyed that so much so i would I'd be really intrigued to see if you know maybe something similar could sort of be reborn here you know and i would love to go and see that definitely i think that's that's a, up to the actor um if you'd like to see improvisation it's always good to catch comedians early on in this writing this set um a lot of comedians often have like uh, very very cheap or free shows that they do just to test new material on the audiences and that's where a lot of improvisation comes in and with really really good comedians it can be like a show um like well, a, a you're quite experienced in that nella we have an ex comedian oh, don't we 
<laughs> yeah, but I wasn't very funny and people threw ice at me, so I don't think <laughs> my Aww. very funny card. Um, yeah. Now I'm here. But, um, I, think, I think this is such a fantastic discussion and I think that we definitely need to see a little bit more improv threaded through in Serbia. I think we've got such a... Uh, the country has such a, a an evolved theatre scene, um, incredibly evolved. I think it's got beautiful, it's got mainstream theatre, it's got some underground theatre, um, beautiful, beautiful theatre and film scenes. So I think that it's ready and it's ripe and, and it's, it's a good time now with, with this pandemic climate that we have and, and whatever other socio-political situations are going on for commentators to come out. And, and really start improvising and giving us a, a bit of, you know, a more human feel with audience interaction. I think that would go down really well. That would go over really well. Um, and I hope That's you the agree. The last material. point, because I'm wrapping this discussion up, girls. Okay. Good idea. No, yeah, last point. What's... Last point. Last point. Oh, from each of us. Um, Last point, um, improvisation is cool, um, it helps written text become more real, it f teaches you how to listen and how to react, which comes from listening, and uh, the best place would be ones that combine written and improvisation, improvisation in reaction and listening, and written in the actual written text. Bojana? Cool! Yeah, my last point would be, I don't know, I, 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 I would love to, you know, I, I would love to explore improv more. I don't feel like as if I, I know enough about it now to kind of have a final point, but I do believe that you need both. There are obviously pro, pros and cons to both, but I don't think you can have one without the other. So, ta-da! And you, we want your comments on this discussion too, so please, um subscribe slap that bell like and comment let us know what you think improv versus uh the written word uh, uh, an already written play um an already written piece let us know what you prefer uh in the comments as i said or if you want us to speak about your event if you're thinking of starting an improv group if you want to have any kind of shout out on baa please email us at bellartattractions at gmail.com or bellgradeartnews at gmail.com We are your hosts. My name is Nella, that's Boyana and Blue Gloves Features for BAA Bell Art Attractions. Bye! Thank you guys for watching.